What's up guys, it's Kayla. Welcome back to another Meteorology Monday. Since it's graduation season, I thought we'd do something a little bit different today and talk about the five best and worst parts of being a Meteorology major. Number one is that you get to be part of a community that's really, really small. Everybody knows everybody basically in the Meteorology and Atmospheric Sciences community and a lot of people end up working with somebody that they know in the future. Number two is that while you're in school, you're generally gonna have a smaller class size. Compared to a lot of other majors, meteorology is really, really small. So while other majors might have 80 students in a regular size class, a meteorology class might only have 20 or 30. This is really, really helpful because you get to know your professors and they get to know you. Keep that in mind for homework. Speaking of homework, number three is that you get to know your classmates because you're always doing homework together. <laughs> Pretty sure my junior and senior year, I didn't go a day without seeing my classmates because we were all in the atmospheric sciences lab together, just doing homework. Friends who suffer together, stay together. Two years later and we're all still best friends, so that goes to show you something. Number four is that you get to work on incredible research projects. There are so many opportunities for research, whether in the field or behind a desk for meteorology majors. While I was in school, there were a lot of days where I would go from launching weather balloons in the pouring snow to sitting behind a desk calculating tons and tons of numbers on tornado data. For a summer internship, I got to sit there for hours every day plotting and making pictures of different tropical storms as they came off the African coast and made landfall into the United States. Pretty cool, right? And because you're doing so much research as an atmospheric science major, you get to present that research at conferences and show your work in front of your peers and mentors and people who you might work for in the future. Networking 101. Last but not least, number five is you get to be involved in a study that makes a difference. I know it's cliche and everybody says that about their major, but I really think that meteorologists get to make a difference in the world. Just think, who would you have to ask about the weather all the time if it wasn't for us? Jokes aside, meteorologists get to do a ton of cool things. From researching how much ice is being lost in the glaciers and the mountains of Peru, to staying on Antarctica and looking at the ice there, to chasing tornadoes and figuring out stuff about tornadoes out in Oklahoma. Then you've got emergency management people, fire weather safety, aviation weather, recording wind speeds on the top of the tallest mountain in New Hampshire, tons of cool stuff. Now that we've talked about a couple of the best things, let's also get into the worst. Number one, you will not sleep as a meteorology student. I don't think I got more than four hours of sleep a night my entire senior year. Doing all this research is fun, but you also have research on top of homework. It's mostly math, so if you don't like math, the homework will be the hardest thing in the world. This is definitely one of those majors where you will be pulling all-nighters at least once or twice a week. Number two is that you will literally learn math equations the size of Texas. I didn't think that you could get math equations that went on for two or three pages until I entered junior year of meteorology. Gee, Kayla, what do these equations even do? It's always comforting to know while you're doing equations in undergraduate school that these equations are graduate level. Another fact for you, a lot of the math that you'll be doing is actually graduate level schooling, but you have to introduce it in undergrad for the graduates to be able to do it. So if you're not thinking about going to graduate school, just know that you're gonna have some graduate work. The third worst thing about being a meteorology student is that nobody will believe you when you say your major's hard. Let me give you a typical conversation when I tell somebody that my major is meteorology. Oh, hey, you're a meteorology student. Hey, that's cool. What do you do, watch clouds all day? We do not just cloud watch all day. I once spent seven hours on one homework problem and it wasn't even right. Number four is that you're gonna get very discouraged, at least at some point in your meteorology student career. I mean, come on, with all that math, it's kind of obvious, right? There's a lot of times where you feel like you're failing. There's a lot of times where you won't be able to get the help that you need. You'll be so far behind on research, you'll be so far behind on your homework that the end just doesn't even seem like it's in sight. But I promise you that if you stick with your classmates and you know your professors and you put in the work and time, you'll be just fine. And last but not least, number five, you will always be asked what the weather is going to be like. It doesn't even matter if you were a forecasting major. I've taken to just checking the weather every morning just so that I can have an answer and not have to explain to somebody 
Oh, you're the meteorologist who doesn't know what the weather's gonna be. That's always a fun conversation. Another one is, are you on TV? Not everybody's on TV, and that's okay. There are a lot of different types of meteorologists, and broadcast meteorology is not the only one. Take me for example. I was weather forecasting, with severe weather research being my passion, not TV. Now I have friends who are in the broadcast industry and they love it, that's great. But there's also about 90% of the other atmospheric scientists who aren't in TV. So if you have a meteorology friend, keep that in mind. Don't ask them if they're on TV. They'll tell you. You know what? I thought there were just five, but you know what? We're gonna throw in number six. I can't leave this one out. Your friends are gonna have no idea what you're talking about 90% of the time. I think the greatest thing we learn as meteorology students is that nobody outside your major cares. Imagine coming home at the end of the day all excited to tell your friends and your family about the quasi-geostrophic omega equation and how you were able to plot stuff on the skew t log p diagram. They're gonna give you the... And yes, I know. They don't even care about how you balance geostrophic winds. And you know what? That's okay. Everybody's different. So that's why you gotta stick with your classmates who care about the same stuff that you do. <laughs> so let me help you out and give you some meteorology student cheat codes. If somebody asks, why is it windy outside? Don't say it's because the cold front is coming through and it's occluding and the low pressure is dropping down. Just say, because it's cold. At the end of the day, being a meteorology student is probably the greatest thing and the worst thing. Be prepared for zero sleep and long equations, but also be prepared to meet some of the people that'll be with you for the rest of your life. The people in your classes that you sit next to and do homework with will become some of your closest friends. These are the people who you're gonna be seeing at conferences year after year. You might even work with them, and they'll always be there for moral support. I know my friends have them. And there's nothing like getting to see those people again after you've been away from them. People who can just nerd out with you about the craziest weather events, and they understand. So that does it for today's Meteorology Monday. Hope you liked the different video today. Uh, if you're thinking about being a meteorology major, go for it! If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and comment below another suggestion. What would you like to see? Until next time, I'm Kayla. Thanks for watching. And remember, don't make things too complicated. No quasi-geostrophic omega equations at the dinner table.